I'm just in my own world. Nothing can stop me. Like people will be next to you saying, oh, there's police there. And you're just like, yeah. <laughs> just in your zone, man. You just love it. Nothing matters. Forget about anything. Feel like you're flying. Especially when you're standing on the seat. Young boys on mopeds get a lot of stick in the UK. Mocked for their 50cc engines, embarrassing L plates, and a sound which resembles a dying hairdryer. They're seen as nothing more than an immature nuisance. But these kids, which you see as terrorising the roads, are actually underground superstars of the streets, with thousands of followers on Instagram, internet celebrity status, and recognised as serious riders by the US bike life scene. This mode of transport, usually associated with grunting prepubescent boys, is cementing the UK as a serious contender in the bike life scene. Taking a leaf from a hugely popular US counterpart, the London boys have started self-publicising through Instagram, organising huge rideouts, and even have their own merchandise. When I was growing up, mopeds were something you got when you were like 16, 17, to hang outside the kebab shop or go up and down the high street. But now there's this group of young people in the UK that are turning that rite of passage into a lifestyle. Kind of like a mod revival, except this time they're wearing trackies and got man bags. With my nostalgia for pet boys getting the better of me, I went out to meet with young ped riders, respected leaders and Instagram stars of the London contingent to find out if bike life can truly exist in the UK or if it's just a moody import. I drove to Brimsdown, a quiet industrial estate in North London, to meet a group of young riders on a warm-up for one of their big rideouts. I'd arranged to meet Ash, aka Wheelie Kid, aka Ashman46 on Insta, co-founder of Moped Facebook group UK Raise It Up, to introduce me to some of the boys. So is this like a warm-up for tomorrow? I don't know, really. It's more of a socialising, like, like a chill-out, calm before the storm. We'll be here for like two hours and then get moved on and then we'll end up tearing up the roads <laughs> yeah. and get in trouble with. <laughs> it's, it, look how safe it is, there's no cars up and down, they still want to kick us off. We ain't causing no trouble. They see us as a hairdryer. On the road. <laughs> yeah, definitely your bike. Hey, none of that. Yeah. Help! Help! <laughs> when you're riding, what you're thinking is like freedom. You're just escaping from what like, you're thinking about. Kind of like when yummy mummies do yoga. Right. I'd rather go to a yummy mummy yoga class, but <laughs> yeah, you know. I don't mind riding. I felt like I was back at school again. These are exactly like the boys I remember. Cute bashful banter, diamond studs and wet lip gel. So I've wanted to go on the back of a pair since I was like 16 and now I've just done it. Loved it. I can't get my helmet off. <laughs> we were like Kim and Kanye. <laughs> Ash invited me to see the garage where he builds his sought-after bikes from scratch, famously known as the Ashman Specials. Fresh tyres, no charge. You know how we do. This is where the magic happens? Yeah. You've been involved in UK Raise Art for how long? It started off, I think, about a year ago. One of my mates, he organised a ride out. From that, it sort of blew up. There was loads of bikes, and um, on my YouTube channel, I put a few videos up. And I literally got so many views, I said to Jake, like, look, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a page on Facebook. It does appeal quite a lot to the younger kids. They want their bit of freedom. Easiest thing to do is go and get your provisional, throw some L plates on your bike and ride. Some people do drive dangerous, but we've got to just advise the younger lot to calm down a bit, hope that no accidents happen. Now I'd say I'm at that point where pretty much sensible until I can't help myself. This is my bike, candy red on so there. So sassy. I literally build them from frame upwards. I've got this nice, shiny exhaust. Does it blow flames? No, it doesn't blow flames, unfortunately. That's the next step, you need to up your game. People know who I am, so I pull up on my bike. They've seen loads of pictures through Instagram, Facebook and that. That's my baby. Watch this space. Have you ever had people trying to steal them before? I did have a bike. Unfortunately, a load of guys came, you know, and 
kicked off the door with guns. They knew who I was. First thing they said to me was, where's your bike keys? <laughs> they stole my bike, they took it, but I build another one, that's how it goes. I'm not about to lose my life over a bike, you know? It's not worth it. Meeting Ash, it was clear that he was a far cry from the moody ped riders I remember. It was a Friday night and I was following him to Ace Cafe, a nostalgic mecca for all the old school bikers on a motorway in northwest London. This was the warm up hype before the big ride out on Sunday. Ashman! Yes, big up! Oh my god, that was coming! <laughs> they just whizzed up the side of me. I've literally never been so excited. Maybe I do like them more than I let on. Me and the boys back together again. And now I'm like riding with them to Ace. Oh no, I'm not. That's the pizza delivery man. Oh my god! I thought I was in UK, raise it up. <laughs> what? Oh my god, this is mental. This is obviously the place to be on a Friday night. Ashran. Ashran. He's on a pizza bike. That's on a pizza bike. What I can't work out is the people that are stopping behind, are they just like normal people trying to get home? Supermoto Matt. I'm the owner of UK Bike Life. Is this enjoyable? At the minute, I'm not really enjoying myself. Each to their own, innit? I, I just buzz off bikes full stop. Yeah? Maybe I need to get on one. Yeah. This is the dream. Am I in now? You in? The only thing that's missing is a bike. their world. Um, when I was 16, that was everything. What's the name is the swag man. I'm the swag man right here. That's the world that you heard. What's your swag? So, the dream team. <laughs> Brando and Cole Brando right here, that's what it is. I just came up with the idea, just UK raise it up. Because raise it up in America. Then Ash took it further, he promoted everything, he blew it up, so you've got to give him props for that, man. It's a lifestyle, it takes over your life. I have to ride, you can't not ride, it's in our blood, it's what we do. Bikes and getting money, that's my favourite things right there. Who just crashed? Two scooters crashing into each other. This is what happens, everyone gets too excited. What, so was anyone hurt? Oh, I don't know. Oh, look at the oh. oh my god. Oh, his headlight's a bit mangled, isn't it? He's one of the younger kids as well. Oh, 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 oh. Before, yeah, there used to be this every Friday, and then next thing you know, there would be like four vans pull up, oh, and everyone's like everyone's oh, just put in the back. Why do you put tape over your number, though? No, on the cover, they'll record you and send, they'll send a letter to your house saying the Danish driver. I'll do whatever it takes to get my wife. Fight to the death? Yes, yeah, I'll fight to the death. Oh. Our police are, are everywhere, oh, man, on the in their cars and that, and they see you, they're straight they're gonna change you. Is it easier to get away if you're on a bike? 100% yeah. get away time. All day long. I don't wear a helmet, I don't fuck with number plates, really. If I've got my own bike, it ain't got a number plate on it. I've got too much to lose, fuck the police. I've just spent my first night at Ace Cafe. I was expecting this like really nice, chilled place where people throw a couple of wheelies. But like when I turned up, it was mental. There was people all across the street. It was so loud, you had to shout. It was like a really bad nightclub. And there was smoke everywhere. And if you stepped too close to the road, you were going to get hit. After today, I think it's just given me like a taste of what's to come. And I'm really looking forward to the ride out. Whilst Ash was the pragmatic and organisational force behind the dynamic duo, One Will Wavy was the fiery and unstoppable pin-up of UK Razor Up, who claims to be able to wheelie forever. A celeb amongst the scene with 5,000 fans on Insta, and followed by some of the most notorious 12 o'clock boys all the way over in Baltimore, Wavy's greatest ambition in life is to make money from bikes, even talking of becoming a stunt rider in Hollywood. Wavy, aka Bossman, 
aka The General, wanted to show me where it all began on the estate he grew up on in North London. When I started secondary school, that was it. Game over. Bike life. <laughs> I was addicted. And where were you getting the bikes from at that age? We would just find them. We would acquire them off the streets. What was like your main victim for that? Pizza Hut. <laughs> Definitely Pizza Hut. We used to order a pizza to like the top floor. Everyone would hide, hear the bike pull up, he'd go upstairs, come back down and we are gone through the bike. What's your like history with the police? I think they're wankers and I think they think the same about me really, but fuck them. They're the number one haters. I can understand when like someone ain't got control over their bike and that and they're wheeling down the road. Yeah, maybe they might have come off and hurt someone. I don't know, there's always going to be them scatty, reckless riders that are there, boy. So where did you get the name One Wheel Wavy? When I ride bikes, I'm always on one wheel, definitely. Never on two wheels. Why were you called Wavy? I'm just wavy, isn't it? Just a wavy guy. So I've been following you on Instagram and you're probably like one of the big names in the scene at the minute. How did that come about, the brand of One Wheel Wavy? When you're going hard, people notice, isn't it? I was doing my thing on, on the pads and that. So I thought, let me just make a video, put it on YouTube, done that, and then that's where it went mad. The right people will notice me. Baltimore, dirt bike capital. That's where I want to be. And when you do get on a bike, how does it make you feel? Free. People say like I'm a bird, innit? I feel, I feel like I'm more like Aladdin or something. Just flying. <laughs> Got that. <laughs> <laughs> on your magic carpet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I be Jasmine? <laughs> yeah, if you want. Wavy was the last person I expected to use a Disney analogy to describe how empowered he felt whilst on a bike. But he was definitely someone who had mastered his environment. Originally something to pass the time, he now sees bikes as a way out of suburban life. Do you know anyone that's been seriously hurt on a bike? Yeah. A couple of close friends have passed away, injured themselves, broken bones, lost limbs. I've seen other people crash and fuck themselves up. Does it put you off? No, it don't, man. When, you, when your friend passes away from riding, you've got to ride for them, for the fallen riders. With mopeds seen as a stepping stone, Wavy introduced me to some of the more experienced riders in UK bike life, who had now passed through onto bigger, faster bikes. But with more power comes more danger. We met on a ride out, and then he had a really bad accident, was in a coma for 13 days. Blunt force trauma, they said, so he broke. Everything, enough, everything on my left side. Every bone in your body? Guard up. <laughs> got foot. metal from here to here. My foot's fucked. It wasn't nice. Getting on the bike and just riding makes me feel more alive. If I didn't have that, I don't know, I reckon I would have drunk myself to death or something stupid like that. I don't know. Do you ever worry about something like that happening again? If I do come off now and it's hard enough, I'm dead. And there's no coming back from that. I think girls are too scared of bikes, to be honest. Why? Even riding out with these guys is scary sometimes, because they're nutcases. I've seen some, someone copying my swag. Sure. This is five star riders. We don't say five star rider in it. Don't put no hashtag around there, B. What is a five star rider? <laughs> you ride anything, everything goes up. Quad bikes, super bikes, dirt bikes, anything. All right, Matt, listen, this is what I do on my t-shirts, yeah? And this is a pair of scissors, what I do with your t-shirts if you copy my designs. Okay, bike life, no, we ain't having that. It's a yeah. five star rider. <laughs> Keep your own swag to yourself, yeah? That little hashtag, yeah, was my design. It stays on five star riders. Five star riders. Cutting up someone's t shirt over a hashtag seemed quite petty. Bike life is meant to be all about community, but this is an example of inevitable boy politics that creep in when self promotion get in the way of riding. Ultimately, this beef was over a t shirt design and a hashtag. When I hear a group of young people speaking so passionately about something, and for them it's way more than just a bike, there's something really noble about it and it's really romantic. But in reality, when you see them zoom in, in and out of cars on a motorway, it really highlights the double-edged sword of what bike life is. It was the day of the big ride out. We followed Ash to meet the other Croydon riders before joining the masses at Ace Cafe. Oh! This is mental. Ow! Oh my God. His feet is on the saddle, on the main road. The police are right there. If this is the warmer, then I'm scared for later. Oh my god, 
god, there's literally so many of them. I have been sleeping. Yeah. Is that why you got these on? Let me see your eyes. <laughs> Have you been to sleep yet? You look kind of sleepy too. Have you not even had a shower and we're out for the big day? These are all gone. Why are you trying to buy a <laughs> What do the women think? Tell me. Yeah, my, my heart's fluttering. <laughs> What's it feel like when you're riding along all together? We the boys. <laughs> we run the boys, pretty much. Standing in a sea of almost a hundred boys in tracksuit bottoms on a hot summer's morning, I started to realise just how important these events were to the people here. Everyone seemed to have a sleepy teen haze still looming over them from the night before. But there was an energy in the air and everyone was excited to be riding out together. So, Ash, like the Pied Piper, has just rallied up the troop. He's like bossing them all where to go. And now we're about to leave for the big ride out. <laughs> Like a hundred bikes, they're completely taken over the road. This is mental, I can barely keep up. The police are right up there, so they're all telling them to slow down at the back. But they're touching their heads. I guess that's the police signal. Seeing the grey and boring dual carriageway transformed by a mob of bikers in Technicolor t-shirts, I was buzzing. It was a Sunday morning spectacle. There was something almost quite majestic about it. But as I was watching them dart in and out of traffic on one wheel, it was clear that one wrong move and someone could get seriously hurt, if not killed. The ride out continued for over an hour until we reached the final location, the wheelie spot. Miraculously, everyone arrived in one piece. Now I need to find Ash because I'll be scared all on my own. You were like Pied Piper, you like gathered them all up and sent them on their way. How does it feel that everyone's like made it here? Well, you've got so many, so many bikers, you've gathered everyone together. To get them all in one spot, it's just a good feeling. There was one accident on the way, unfortunately, due to unexperienced riders not being aware of their surroundings. We ride in a group, you look out for each other. I'm surprised that there's not more than one accident. Like that. All the bikes are out. you're going mad, isn't you? So, I mean, one crash is actually bad. Isn't it? There's so many people here. How does it feel when you're all together? Family. Yeah. Not everyone knows everyone, but we all ride bikes. Everyone comes together, it doesn't matter who you are, what area, we've got people from Peckham, North London, we're from South London. You've got a bike in the bike, yeah, they're friends. I don't know how you explain it, it's like our church. <laughs> this is our church on Sunday. <laughs> but now Sunday. This is a lot safer Women's than what... Body armor. Yeah, for your boobies. <laughs> they call me scat right? Every time I rim, I say face. Sometimes when I'm doing a wheelie, I drift up to the next lane. I play chicken with other cars. Suddenly, the vibe turns sour. Supermoto appeared with a bloody nose, apparently something to do with a t-shirt cutting incident from the day before. It was a shame that something as petty as Instagram beef had escalated to this level. Fuck the beef between each other, get your mind. But soon it was diffused by all the riders one common enemy, the police. They'd arrived to shut it down and rumours were quickly spreading that they had allegedly tried to hit a rider off his bike. To avoid any further antagonism, Ash rounded up over a hundred riders and moved them on. Fucking punk spoilers! Look how many police cars they get out just for some bikes, man. Fucking bored little wanker, man. Look at this, just for a couple bikes having some fun on the road. Look, one, two, three, four, five. There's five police cars here that could be out catching a serious crime right now. Wasting time, look at this. They come and literally boom, flicked out the, the trenches straight away, went for it, like boom, boom. Some guy nearly got hit off his bike by the police. But there's no need for that. If he had a weapon, then maybe, yeah. They, they just want to hit someone, they? they just want to use their bat, and that's what it is. They just want to make a wreck, that's what it is. They want to take people's bikes. Everyone's leaving now because about six police cars have shown up. There's no need to, there's no need to speed yet. I can kind of understand why the police want to shut it down. There was even two kids that had an accident on the way here. But on the other hand, it seems like there's a group of young people with so much energy and so much passion and they just want a place to feel together and there's not really anywhere that they can do that. Far from being antisocial, what I found was a club of lost boys searching for a bit of fantasy and escapism from an environment where both things are severely lacking. Yes, it's dangerous. 
yes, it's irresponsible, but their dedication to forming a lifestyle around a vehicle that sometimes people laugh at truly does reflect a classic British ability to make the best of what you have. Obsessions with recognition and online profile might not seem that impressive, but for them, it's a glimmer of hope that they might be picked out of obscurity and flown over to join the American gods of bike life. But even if they don't, they've created something that's their own, that reflects who they are and where they come from. And it turns out after all these years, there's still something charming, fun, and a little bit edgy about boys on bikes. <laughs>